In this video, I will discuss running the PowerShoot Network Shutdown Setup Wizard. PowerShoot will be configured to work with VMware's vCenter server and two VMware ESXi hosts. Prior to starting this video, I have installed the PowerShoot Network Shutdown Virtual Appliance on a VMware host. If you need assistance with installing the PowerShoot Network Shutdown Virtual Appliance, please see Schneider Electric FAQ FA296461. Please note that the setup wizard is the same whether I've installed PowerShoot on a standalone Windows server that will be configured to work with VMware or if I've installed the PowerShoot Network Shutdown Virtual Appliance on a VMware host. After installing the Virtual Appliance, when I first viewed the console, I see that I need to browse to the IP address 10.218.45.217.6547 to access the setup wizard. The IP address 10.218.45.217 is the IP address that my DHCP server assigned to this virtual machine. 6547 is the port that PowerShoot Network Shutdown communicates on. To access the setup wizard, I will open a new browser tab and enter the virtual machine's IP address. In the port 6547. When my browser first accesses PowerShoot Network Shutdown, I am warned that my connection is not private. This is because PowerShoot Network Shutdown creates a security certificate that the browser is not familiar with. I must accept that security certificate to be able to continue. So I will click Advanced, proceed to the IP address. Now I will see the setup wizard. I'm told in the first window that PowerShoot Network Shutdown must be configured with the details of the network management card or cards in the UPSs providing power. PowerShoot cannot monitor the UPSs for critical events until the setup has been completed, so I will click Next to continue. In this window, I'm asked to select my network configuration. My options are IPv4 or IPv6. A description of each is available in the PowerShoot Network Shutdown User's Guide or by clicking on the question mark in the upper right-hand corner, which will launch the help files. Please note that if my virtual machine had multiple IP addresses, when I click Next, I would see a window similar to this, where I would be allowed to select the IP address that I would assign to PowerShoot Network Shutdown. My virtual machine does not have multiple IP addresses, so when I click Next, that window will not appear. I'm now asked to configure PowerShoot to work with a standalone VMware host or a host managed by vCenter Server. If I were to select Standalone VMware Host and click Next, I'm asked to enter the host IP address, the host username, and the host password. I'm also given the options of host protocol, whether it's HTTPS or HTTP. I will go back because I will be configuring with a host managed by vCenter Server, so I will select Host Managed by vCenter Server and click Next. In this window, as in the previous one for a single host, I'm given the options to select HTTPS or HTTP and the port that will be used. I'm also asked to enter the IP address or the host name of the vCenter Server. I will enter the IP address. the vCenter Server username and the vCenter Server password. I'm also given the option to check vCenter Server is running as a VM. In my case, vCenter Server is running as a VM, so I will select that and click Next to continue. In this window, I must select my UPS configuration. Options presented are Single, Redundant, Parallel, Advanced. For more information on any of those particular configurations, please review the PowerShoot Network Shutdown User's Guide, or you can click on the question mark in the upper right-hand corner to view the help files, 
Another option is to click on the eye next to the title, which will present a description of that particular configuration. Note that if Advanced is selected, I see a message that says Advanced Configuration is not supported if PowerShoot Network Agent is installed on a virtual machine. I will select Single since I will be configuring with a single UPS and click Next to continue. In this window, I'm asked to enter a username, password, and authentication phrase. The username used to log into this PowerShoot agent must match the username PowerShoot we use to access the network management card. As an example, if the username assigned to the PowerShoot shutdown parameters in the network management card is APC, then the username for this PowerShoot agent must be APC. If you have an NMC running firmware older than 6.0, the username for PowerShoot must match the username used to log into the network management card. The password is unique to this PowerShoot agent and does not need to match the network management card. The authentication phrase does need to match the authentication phrase entered on the network management card. The default authentication phrase is admin user phrase. Since the phrase has not been changed on the network management card from the default, I will leave the phrase as it has been pre-entered for me. To verify the username that I must use, I will log into my network management card. Go to Configuration, Shutdown, scroll to the bottom of the page. Here I will find the username and authentication phrase that should be used with the PowerShoot agent. The default username of APC is in use, along with the default authentication phrase of admin user phrase. So back in the PowerShoot setup, I will enter the username of APC. Enter the password I would like to use. Again, I will use the default setting of admin user phrase for the, for the authentication phrase and click Next to continue. In this window, I will enter the IP address of the network management card PowerShoot will be communicating with. and click Next to continue. I'm now asked to verify the communications information between PowerShoot and the network management card and click Apply. PowerShoot will attempt to communicate with the network management card and I now see that communications has been established. So I'll click Next to continue. In this window, I'm asked to please select the hosts that are being powered by the UPS. I'm going to select 10.218.44.22 and 10.218.44.23 and click Next to continue. Since the UPS that I'm configuring is a Smart UPS SMX 1500, that UPS has outlet groups. So I'm asked to select the outlet group that the hosts are plugged in to. If my UPS did not have outlet groups, I would not see this screen. I will select outlet group number one since that's the outlet group that the hosts are plugged in to and click apply to continue. Once PowerShoot has registered with that outlet group, I will click next to continue. In this window, I will configure the virtualization settings. My options are virtual machine migration, virtual machine shutdown startup, vApp shutdown startup, vCenter server VM shutdown, vSphere plugin, all hosts online prior to startup. For more information on any of these settings, please click on the question mark in the upper right hand corner or click on the question mark next to the heading, which will launch a description of that particular topic. I strongly recommend reviewing Schneider Electric Application Note 180 
that describes the PowerShoot Network shutdown, shutdown, and startup process for VMware. Here on page 4, I see my particular configuration where I have PowerShoot running as a VM and vCenter servers running as a VM, as signified by the PowerShoot and vCenter server icons. Also, in the diagram, I see that there is a single UPS configuration. Down here, I see the shutdown sequence that tells me that after the UPS has been reported on battery, the shutdown delays have happened, PowerShoot will start maintenance mode in each host. At that time, it sends a command to turn off the UPS or the outlet groups. PowerShoot then starts the VM shutdown, followed by the VApp shutdown. VM and VApp shutdown duration elapses, and PowerShoot gracefully shuts down the vCenter server VM. vCenter server VM duration elapses, and PowerShoot starts executing any command files that need to be run. Once the command file time has elapsed, PowerShoot starts shutting down the VMware host using the order of the VMware host protection page. The host running vCenter is shut down second to last before the host running PowerShoot. PowerShoot waits for the greater of low battery duration, maximum required delays for non-outlet group aware UPSs or the outlet group power off delay for UPSs with available outlet groups. It then turns the UPS off. For the startup process, it is described, input power is restored, PowerShoot waits for the remaining host to be powered back on, PowerShoot starts vCenter server, it then waits for any vApps to be started, and then finally VMs are started. The first setting is VM migration. VM migration is PowerShoot will migrate any of the virtual machines that are running to an available host if the host that they are running on is going to be powered down. I will not be utilizing this, so I will not check it. The next option is virtual machine shutdown startup. I do want my virtual machines to be shut down by PowerShoot and started up, so I will select both of these. The next option is vApp shutdown startup. I will not be using vApp shutdown and startup, so I will not select this. The next option is vCenter server VM shutdown. The default delay is 240 seconds. So as mentioned earlier, the way this will work is that after the UPS has been on battery, and when it tells PowerShoot to start a shutdown, it will first start the virtual machine shutdown process. It will then start vApp shutdown process. Wait any of the delays that have been set for that. It will then tell vCenter server to begin the start, to, excuse me, to begin the shutdown process. It will then wait 240 seconds before it begins the host shutdown process. The next setting is vSphere plugin. vSphere plugin puts a PowerShoot icon in the vSphere web client homepage allowing you to launch directly to PowerShoot from the vSphere web client. I will not be utilizing this. And finally, all hosts online prior to startup. How this works is that PowerShoot will wait for all hosts to be online before VM vApp startup process starts. I will be selecting this and click Next to continue. I'm now asked to verify the settings that I have configured and click Next to continue. In this window, I've given three options. Do not turn off the UPS, turn off the UPS, turn off the UPS Outlet Group. That particular Outlet Group would be the Outlet Group that I configured earlier. The reason for this is to allow for automatic restart of the host servers when power is restored after a power failure. I will select turn off the UPS so the entire UPS will be turned off and then when AC is restored it will turn back on therefore will restore power to the host servers which will then restart and click next to continue. I'm now given the option to click here for information on configuring shutdown events or to click finish. I will click finish to log into the PowerShoot Network shutdown web interface. Now that I've logged into the PowerShoot Network shutdown web interface, I see the event log, which shows me the events that have occurred since I first installed the PowerShoot Network shutdown virtual appliance on my host.
I will create another video at a later date that walks through each of the PowerShoot Network shutdown menu items. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you.